Hello everyone, uh, my name is Rob Moran. I'm with the County of Riverside Economic Development Team and we are producing a series of videos for our business community uh, affected by the coronavirus COVID-19 situation. And today we are joined by Paul Nolta from the Inland Empire Small Business Development Center. Paul, great to have you here, appreciate it. Uh, Thanks for the mic. I've got the hand mic and he's, he's got the, the fancy <laughs> uh, lapel microphone. And so I'm going to hold this close to my mouth so hopefully everybody can hear. Uh, wanted to mention that uh, we're going to be going through a presentation that Paul and his team have prepared. And I think you'll see it flash on the screen, different slides. You don't need to take screenshots or pictures of it. We're going to upload it to our website, which you see on your screen now. It's rivcobizhelp.org. And we created this website specifically uh, for businesses that are affected uh, by the coronavirus uh, situation. There's a lot of great information there on federal, state, and local resources, so I encourage you to go there. You'll be able to download this there. But take a look at the various business programs that are there. Some of those are available uh, even um, outside of this whole situation, so I encourage you to take a look. Paul, thanks for, for being here. Real quick, um, what is the Inland Empire SBDC, the Small Business Dev Development Center? Uh, thanks for having us here, Rob. I'm, uh, the Small Business Development Center works very closely with the SBA, Small Business Administration, counties of Riverside and San Bernardino, and the cities within. And what we do is help people start, maintain, or expand their small business. Do that through a couple key ways. One is through training, one is through hands-on consultation, and the last is through a link to resources. So resources currently today would be the disaster loan is what we're yes. dealing with a lot right now. Excellent. And so. Yes, that is the main topic of today's uh, presentation, and uh, it's the, the Small, Business, Small Business Administration. That's a, a federal uh, department, and SBA offers loans routinely. Uh, they're a great resource. They partner with commercial banks uh, to offer all different types of loans in a, sort of a normal economic environment. Uh, but they also offer uh, disaster loans, and they offer a, a different variety, uh, different varieties of disaster loans depending on the situation. And the, sit the 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 loan that's available now is is called an economic injury disaster loan. It's a special category, and the entire state of California, I believe, has been declared a disaster area. Not correct. Uh, and Riverside County is part of that as a result of the coronavirus situation. And, and so that means that businesses are eligible to apply, and that's the fundamental thing that has to happen uh, before a business can apply. Uh, usually when there's are the types of disasters that are, are more common in California are fires and flooding, and those are typically limited to certain geographic areas, but this one's pretty much affected the, the entire country. And so we're going to go through kind of a step-by-step -step process about what the loan is used for, what it's not used for, how do you apply? Um, I, I will add a, a, a caveat, and this is something that Paul and his team and others have been experiencing. The SBA's website's been having some technical glitches because they're not used to having basically the whole country's business community apply at once. And so we're going to hopefully offer some tips there uh, to make that work for you if, you if you do want to apply. But please note that there have been uh, some basically the website's been overloaded and mm -hmm. and so we, we we know that can be frustrating and difficult uh, when you really need to apply uh, for these loans so uh, caveat want you to be aware that that's that's what's happening I know the SBA is working on that uh, but they they are uh, overwhelmed typically you don't have the entire country <laughs> applying for these types of loans so right. it, it is a little bit different so let's get to it um, like I said, this is going to be on the website. So let's start with the basics. What what businesses are eligible to apply? So yes, um, basically it is, such as you said, any business that files a tax return mm -hmm. within the state of California that is being affected and will have a, a shortfall, if you will, due to uh, the coronavirus. So basically, and, and some Maybe some common examples are obviously restaurants. Absolutely. Um, 
and, and other businesses, uh, transportation companies. Transportation, that, businesses. I mean, again, you file a, a it's, tax it's return for your open. business. Aside from, I mean, it's easier to say which ones are not eligible sure. than to say who is eligible. Right, right. Um, the ones that would not qualify would be obviously uh, religious institutions, um, casinos. Okay. Um, there's a handful of them. Cannabis There'll be a spreadsheet up probably. there. There's like, a, like yeah, there's like five or so that are that are not available, and you'll see it on the screen. Okay. Very good. So. We talked about ineligible, yeah, charitable organizations, religious or gambling, casinos, um, agricultural enterprises, um, and, and they're they're not uh, eligible. Okay, Correct. so got that. Um, so what are the basics here? Um, what so, are, it, it's the, yeah. So the key things to think about it with this is is when you're looking at this is is this right for you? Right, this is debt. And is the debt right for you at this time? Because even when we take this thing, once this all clears and we're all said and good, we still have a federal loan on our hands. We sure. still have a debt that we got to cover. Sure. And so there's some thought process into going to this um, and, and things you want to think about. So when doing that, you're going to want to sit down with our team and first analyze what this loan is. So first and foremost, it is one of the only loans that you will get directly from the SBA. Okay. So prior no to banks this, are involved no here. banks are involved. Okay. So and, and to apply, you apply directly through the SBA. Correct. So there, you're not going to the county, you're not going to the SBDC, you're not going to commercial bank. This is done directly through the Small Business Administration. Correct. And it's done online or via phone, right? You can do it via mail. Or via mail. Okay. But they're highly recommending that we do this online. Okay. So. That makes sense, and, and obviously that's going to be much quicker than doing it snail mm -hmm. mail, right? right. Um, now, I'm, I'm jumping ahead a slide or two, so let's just kind of knock out some of the basics. So, um, eligible companies may qualify for loans up to $2 million. Correct. Is, do you see a lot of them at $2 million, or is it a, uh, I know a lot of these are small businesses, or does it vary? It varies by industry. You know, our hotels and our big wineries and those things we, in our region may be in that, in that thing. But some okay. things you want to consider when we're going to amounts. Um, to just go in and say, I want $2 million isn't going to work. Right, so well, that's right. where our team is going to help you. So what we want to do is sit down and project a loss. Right? And we're not talking about the loss of revenue. We're talking about the loss of operating costs. Okay. So if we take out the revenue equation and say, all right, every month I got to pay electricity bill, I got to pay payroll, I got to pay marketing, I got to pay, you know, that operating cost. So if that operating cost is $40,000 a month, we're going to multiply that by six. And that's our starting point of what our ask is going to be. Okay. So that's, a, that's an important nuance. Yes. So it's not to say I, I'm not going to make X amount of dollars. It's more or less of what it's going to cost me to correct a loss of of being able essentially loss of revenue to be able to pay for those costs. Correct. So it's really focused more on the cost side than it is profit or anything along those lines. Right. Otherwise, yes. all of us would say we're going to make a million bucks. Right. Right. Okay. Um, real quickly, interest rates uh, for small businesses are three and three quarters percent, three point seven five percent. Yep. And for nonprofits, it's two point seven five percent terms up to 30 years. Correct. Uh, what's a, is the term based on the amount and repayment ability? Amount, need, projections, um, all of those factors go into use of funds. Okay. Um, determines what that length will be. Okay, so I'm, I, I jumped ahead a little bit. Um, now, I heard something from one of the SBA reps, so the first payment isn't due for 11 months? Correct, okay. there's a 12 month deferment process, that, okay. and again, you don't have to take the full 12 months if you don't want to, but up to 12 month it's deferment, to 12 month. Okay. Uh, know that interest does accrue during that non-payment cycle. Yes, it does. Um, so that's one important aspect when we're, we're putting it together. Yeah, yeah, everything needs to be taken into consideration. Okay, so let, let, me, let me kind of come back a, a couple of slides. So we talked about what are, you know, a little bit about the basic parameters about what the loan are, and, and we, can, we can readdress some of that. Yeah, and then the other forward. key points that you want to think when we're putting your package together, um, because everybody's going to be different. Um, one of the key things is when do I, you know, I get it asked all the time, when do I do this? When do I put this into action? Right. Well, because there's no cost to apply, 
and there's millions of people that are going to do this, and we don't have to accept it even if we're approved, act quickly. Act quickly. Okay. Right? So Great. we're going to do your projections. We're going to do everything out. We're going to have all that stuff done. I recommend you be doing this anyways. So since we're going through all the work of getting all of our financial documents in order, um, we'll have it prepared. We submit the loan um, and go through the process. It's not going to be a quick process anyhow. Right. Now, I, I understand it's about two to three weeks to get approved yes. or, or to get a response. Yeah, we've submitted probably a dozen on last Monday and we have not received a response yet. So okay. it's going to take some time to get those responses. And, and I suspect that given the volume of applicants that they're, they're receiving and, and even additional applicants, so be a little bit patient. I know, I know this is abrupt and a very difficult time, uh, but it's going to take about two to three weeks at least All right. to get and, a response. And then again, when we go into package yours, you know, it's, it just really depends on your parameters because ultimately it is a loan. Ultimately, we're looking at credit scores, you know, yep. 650 credit scores. We're looking at collateral. Um, you won't require collateral for up to 25,000, but once we go over 25, there's a collateral position that needs to be taken. Okay. Um, we can bypass your current tax returns if you're below uh, 500,000. We won't have to upload your current, have all your tax returns prepared and ready. Once we go over 500,000, we're gonna need those. And we're gonna share a little bit later what the whole package needs to include. Right? Correct. And so we've got a list of things for you. And, uh, and let me ask you a question. If you get denied, can you reapply? Yeah, and what, depending and then on the situation, you can. You have up to a six month window to reapply with okay. or to make amendments and adjustments without having to do a full um, reply. Well, after that six weeks, then we're resubmitting the whole pack, or six months, we have that to uh, resubmit the whole package again. Because I suspect you might be getting some, some businesses that are contacting you because they've been denied. Yes. And maybe they, they approach. Not yet, because nobody's been responding. Yeah, not yet. Not it. yet. But uh, if that happens, because maybe they approached it a little bit differently in terms of the revenue versus the cost side of it, and SBA uh, maybe didn't like that, you can kind of help. Yeah, and that's really it. the key to it, I think, because you got to think out of it on their end. You know, they're receiving hundreds of these, and then thousands, they're thousands, I would say. Yeah, probably. thousands of these, <laughs> and so we want to present the cleanest, most complete package we can the first time. Sure. Right, um, and because our team is there to help you through the process, from packaging it to making sure we have everything on the checklist to making sure we have all the supplemental documentation to make sure we have a clean narrative that explains what our current situation is and why we're affected and what we plan to do to recover and how it's going to cash flow. Um, the cleaner we can make that package the first time, um, the easier it's going to be on everybody. Very good. Okay. And you mentioned that SBA's working capital loans are different from other SBA loans. We, we touched on that a little bit mm -hmm. earlier in the introduction, that the disaster loan programs different than other SBA loan programs. So if one of our businesses has worked with the SBA before in a, what, you know, the 504 loan program or the 7A loan program, that this is, this is a different animal. Absolutely. Right? So they're looking at things differently um, for this particular loan than they, than they would those. So that, that's an important consideration. And what I want to emphasize is please reach out to the Inland Empire SBDC, Paul and his team. Uh, and if you're in the Coachella Valley of Riverside County, we have the Coachella Valley Small Business Development Center uh, that's operated through the county, so we can help you there. So this isn't, this is countywide. This is, uh, uh, we have experts to help you uh, no matter where you're located. So very good. Um, we talked a little bit about the terms, two million interest rates. Um, what are some of the, the use of the loan funds? Uh, yeah, debts, payroll, accounts yeah. payable? Yeah, basically the simple answer would be if you went and pulled up your profit and loss statement and looked at your expense items, your operating cost. Yeah. It's going to cover pretty much everything on that The operating list. cost side mm -hmm. of it, okay. What about debt consolidation? That, that would work? Would that qualify <laughs> potentially? You know what? I'm not 100% certain on that. Okay. I can look it up, though, and, and get back to you on that. Okay. I, I, I wasn't sure if it was, and that's, a, I think, a question that's come up. Um, and, and I We're receiving updates on it daily. It is so changing. we are receiving, my, our staff receives a, a training at 4 o'clock every day. So as updates that, are that coming through, 
uh, we'll be able to answer that. But I, I don't want to say yes and give you some wrong information. No, no, I appreciate that. And that's, a, you know, Paul's brought up a, a good point, not just related to the SBA uh, loan, but there's a lot of everything is about this right now. And there's new programs and new, new efforts underway every single day. And so that's why I think it's important that you stay in tune with like our website. Um, and even currently there's a stimulus package going through the federal government. Not sure what that's going to contain or look like by the time it goes through or if it'll, or if it'll even be approved. Right. But there's likely to be further stimulus efforts on behalf of the federal government and the state government to assist businesses. So um, kind of taking a, a sidebar here, it's important to stay engaged with the SBCs and the county's economic development teams uh, so that you can learn what the latest and greatest is uh, yeah. to assist businesses. And there's, you know, our local lenders and the lending institution and as a whole will be launching programs. They're all in development right now. Nothing is ready to go, but I know that things are going to be coming out and we'll have a lot of other local lenders are going to have some programs in place. Sure. Um, so, I mean, I guess the key takeaway at this point is, you know, the word disaster in the loan tells you this is a last resort type of a thing. Right. Right. It's not the cure-all. It's not the fix. It's not the, you know, it's debt right that we're right. going to be signing right. for you still have to pay it back still have to pay it back right um, but at the same time it is a safety net it, that is there and it doesn't cost us anything to apply and have that there knowing that if i need it i can tap into it very good and it, it, it's in you know and that repayment ability is going to be key even mm -hmm. though folks are are suffering and businesses are suffering during this time that they, they, they still got to pay it back, and that is going to be a consideration. In the, Can we cash flow once, right. the, once the payments kick in and sales go back to normal? Right, right. So um, that, that's important to know. So how to apply? We talked a little bit about that. We, you apply directly through the SBA, and you're going to see a slide there that shows the website. Uh, you know, I heard an interesting tip uh, from the SBA directly, and this was because of the volume and I, I, I think I mentioned this earlier mm -hmm. during this, this video, that the, the, the website's getting overwhelmed. And what is also unique about this situation is that this is nationwide. It's worldwide. But the SBA loans um, are, are available across the country. And so there's a ton of people on here trying to apply. And it's overwhelming the website. So one suggestion, I actually heard this from an SBA representative in a, uh, another webinar, was that if you think perhaps maybe a great time to apply is first thing in the morning, you get up at five or six and, mm -hmm. and you want to apply before maybe other folks on the West Coast, is that keep in mind the East Coast has already gotten a three or four hour jump on us. Right. And so you've got the entire Eastern seaboard and the middle of the country probably already applying and so they kind of beat you to the punch. So. You know, the suggestion was maybe apply at, at late at night, right. at midnight, one o'clock in the morning when most people are asleep both here and on the East Coast and the rest of the country. And I, I know nobody's really excited about applying it at late at night, but that could avoid some of the technical glitches with the website and have hopefully have it go through smoothly. Right. So that's a hopefully a tip that's helpful. Um, and, and if, you, if you're a night owl, maybe that, that works better for you. Um, tips. Recheck filing requirements, missing information. Let's talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so again, because it's constantly changing, you know, we just heard yesterday that because as we're going through the, the process and the application, some of the things they are uh, altering. So again, yesterday they announced that if you are applying for under 500000 you do not have to upload your tax returns. So it's a step okay. that's going to exceed it. Uh, one of the key takeaways is when you go to register and create your account, make sure you write and save that password because okay. they cannot reissue one if you lose it. Oh boy. Okay, so make sure. You'll have sure. to start all over again and start a new one. Oh boy, yeah, that's a real important tip. So make sure you write down your username and your password. Yes. Otherwise, you've got to start the whole yeah, process. Yeah, they have the over. inability to reissue a new one right now. Okay. So, so make sure you write that down and save it. Yeah. If you're like me, sometimes I 
I forget that password, even though I, I, I do have places I keep them, but right. um, I, sometimes it's a, a little bit of a guessing game. And so right. make sure you write that down as soon as you establish it. Otherwise, you got to do the whole thing over again. Right. And, and okay. kind of what we were going to want to, what we recommend and how we're doing it in our office is that we are actually have printed out the application. Okay. And we sit down with you and pre-fill it out, go through the checklist, go through everything, make sure it's all packaged, get your narrative together, get your projections together, get your personal financial statements together. You know, we got to go and get all of your, your 401k assets and we basically, you know, a profit and loss for your business or your, your business is what we're doing. And we get all those stuff and have that pack, package pre-done and ready to go. Okay. And now we log in and make the most efficient time, use of that time as we're on the system and are now just plugging away and uploading documents. Now, Paul, one of the things that the SBDC has historically done is you've actually had the client, the business, come into your office mm -hmm. and you'll do it right there. The SBDC will actually help you apply sitting down in, in front of you. Correct. Now, obviously, because of social distancing requirements now, uh, and stay-at-home orders and so forth. You're you're moving this online, correct? Yeah, we're doing Zoom conferences. Um, we all have our Zoom accounts, and our consultants are ready to go, so we can okay. share a screen, see each other's face, and and still Perfect. conduct work. So even though uh, they're they're closed to the public in terms of walk-in customers, uh, they are prepared to assist virtually mm -hmm. um, through an online platform. And so that's important to note. And I don't think a lot of folks realize that that. These guys can help walk you through step by step in the application process, which can make a huge difference. Because uh, sometimes, you know, when you fill out an application, there are certain things you're not exactly sure how to answer them. Yeah, there's what some information you, should you know put in. tricky things on there. You know, and it goes to business affiliations and you know just weird things that you wouldn't know how to answer. Um, Absolutely. Not that it's super complicated, but it's just streamlined once you have some help and some assistance. I mean, again, the key to this is we want to present the cleanest application possible, the most complete application possible, so that we're, you know, decreasing the back and forth timelines because you multiply that by the number of people that are going after this. Right. We want to speed right. up the process, not slow it down. And the, the one thing I, I also heard from the SBA, and, and you mentioned it here, is that if you apply and you receive assistance, you can ask for more down the road. Yeah, so if we, for example, that I gave, we go out six months and maybe we didn't ask for enough, we shortchanged ourselves, or it goes longer, we can reassess it at that time and initially okay. get an additional funding. And is there a, a timeline there? I know we talked about six months, but is there a timeline that you can reapply? Is it a year that from the first, you know, if you get it from the first award, mm -hmm. loan award, is it another year that you have to ask for more before you have to do a new application, or is it basically how to you won't have to submit a new application if it's within that timeline that we specify. The six months? Right. Okay, got it, six months. So that's important to know that if you do get it. And, and I would, again, double check on that for you guys. Yeah. Because I, don't, okay. again, don't want to give them complete misinformation, so um, I will verify we'll the confirm. duration. Yeah. And, and, and as we mentioned earlier, things are changing. Daily, um, hourly. So, <laughs> hourly, absolutely. And so those timelines could change, right. uh, could be extended, could be shortened. It just depends on, uh, hopefully not shortened, but right. it just depends on what happens. I'm assuming forward. something's going to change in there because, you know, one of the things that they just announced this morning was the <laughs> extension of tax filing deadline to Correct. June or July, I believe. I think it's, and yeah. if you are going for above 500000 they want completed tax returns. So I don't know what their thought is yet on we just gave an extension. Do you have to go get this done before you can apply? Correct. Her net currently, I would have to say yes, but I'm assuming that's going to change. So we're 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 waiting to hear more guidance from the SBA and the federal government on that particular. Yeah, and assignment. as we're filling them out, I think we're all learning at the same time, you know, on on <coughs> getting this through the process. Very good. And so the the last slide, um, well, second to last slide, uh, has the package documentation checklist. So you'll see uh, wh whether you get this on our website or you're looking at the, the screen, there's, there's a whole host of items that are important to have mm -hmm. and are required to submit. So make sure you dig up those documents. That's uh, necessary. Uh, so look forward. Uh, yeah, and this is where we, we definitely want to, the, 
I'm sure this spread, this uh, checklist will be provided to you on this on this website here, and we'll definitely yeah. make it available. Those are the things you're going to want to get together, um, and we'll help you package it, help you find it, and help you get it ready, and, and before you get your online registration going. It's just going to make life a lot easier for everybody if you're you're ready to go instead of having to go in and out, in and out of the system, and and uh, you know. Absolutely. No, you. And I think we all want to make this as efficient as possible right. on, on both ends. You right. guys are dealing with a lot of customers, a lot of businesses applying through the SBA, and you know the businesses have a lot to worry about on their own. So we want to try to make this process as efficient for everybody um, on all sides of the equation. Mm -hmm. uh, so that great advice, Paul. Thank you very much for taking the time uh, to sit down with us today and share this. Um, I'm hoping you can come back and we can, we've got a lot of great information. We, we did another video and maybe we can, we can talk about some other topics uh, yeah. another day. We'd love uh, to. Uh, appreciate your, your partnership and support. You want to reach Paul and his team at the Inland Empire Small Business Development Center. Their phone number is on the screen as well as their website. And, and don't forget to check our website because we've conglomerated and, and cataloged all the different state, federal, even private programs that are available and those are changing daily hourly as we mentioned so please check back and don't don't hesitate to contact us at the at the Riverside County uh, economic development team and, and we look forward to helping with you and thank you for your time